Hi, I'm Cadet Shelby Harris. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Hi, my name is Haley Jackson. I play volleyball for the Enid Pacers. The reason I love playing volleyball is because it gives me another opportunity to hang out with my friends and support my school. Hi, my name is Faith. I play volleyball because it helps me with my coordination, reflexes, and balance. It also helps me represent my culture. Please come out and support our EHS spring sports. Go Big Blue! I like it. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Brianna Clayton. And I'm Lainey Morris. Happy Vision Seeker Wednesday, everyone. We're here for the Enid High Student Council to talk about this week's Great Expectations Principle of the Week. This week, it's dependability, which is the quality of being reliable and trustworthy. As American actress Jennifer Aniston once said, where would you be without friends? The people to pick you up when you need lifting. We come from homes far from perfect, so you end up almost parent and sibling to your friends, your own chosen family. There's nothing like a really loyal, dependable, good friend. Nothing. Really think about this. Who depends on you? What can you do to be there for them? It could be anything. Showing up on time for work more? Surprising your mom or dad with a drink from Sonic when you go for yourself? Lots of people count on you, so how can you be there for them more? No matter how you show it, think of how you can be more dependable for the people that count on you. Have a great day, Eden and I. Hi everybody, I'm Erin McCoy. I'm the director of Upward Bound at Northern Oklahoma College. And we're here today to talk to you a little bit about our program and see if you'd be a good fit for membership. So who are we? We're a free membership organization that helps you prepare for college by earning a great grade point average while you're in high school and also making really good ACT scores. We've got members from Enid, Pioneer, and Wacoma schools. There are 816 Upward Bound programs around the world, and we're in all 50 states. And this program has been on the NOC campus in Enid since 2007. How do you join us? Well, first of all, you have to have a really good GPA of at least a 2.5. And you have to have completed the eighth grade, which all of you have, of course, and be between the ages of 13 and 19. Then you either have to come from a low-income family or be the first generation college student in your family. If you decide you want to look more into us, you can find our application online at noc.edu. So once you're in Upward Bound, what's expected of you? Well, you have to keep that 2.5 grade point average and we'll help you do that. And now I'm gonna let my two colleagues, Ian and Kim, talk to you about how we will do those things. Hello, I'm Ian Lane. I'm the Education Specialist. I oversee the Learning Center, which is a quiet place where you can come uh, do homework after school or receive one-on-one -on -one tutoring with a qualified tutor. Uh, if you do have a grade lower than a B in a class, you are required to come in for tutoring. I also oversee the ACT workshops, which are at the beginning of the first week of each month which you come in and raise that score for your college entrance exam and you learn better uh, test taking strategies. Uh, additionally, I oversee the Summer Academy, which you will be required to, to attend. It is not for a grade, it's more about trying to intertwine learning and having fun, so the teachers get to have a lot of freedom with it. Uh, and additionally, as Aaron has said previously, you are required to have a 2.5 or higher GPA to remain in good standing with the, with the program. Hi everybody, my name is uh, Kimberly and I'm the academic advisor for Upward Bound and I will meet with the 9th and 11th grades um, on an as needed basis and we'll discuss your grades and how your classes are going um, and to make sure you applied for Oklahoma's Promise and we'll discuss what you uh, want to major in when you go to college. And uh, when you become a senior in high school, um, I will help you narrow down the um, colleges you want to apply to, um, decide uh, what college offers and majors you're interested in, um, and we can go over what the um, actual cost of attendance to those colleges cost, and um, we'll fill out college applications, uh, we'll find money 
to help pay for you to go to college. Um, and in doing that, I'll help you find scholarships. Um, I'll send you scholarship applications to apply for, and I'll assist you and your parents in filling out the uh, federal financial aid application. Um, I'll also help you walk uh, you and your parent um, or your guardian through the whole college process. So as an academic advisor, that's what I do for the program. So guys, that's us in a nutshell. Um, there are some more slides to look at if you'd like to see some photographs of places that we have been. We not only stress academics at Upward Bound, but we also take you on uh, cultural tours and trips in places like museums and Broadway shows in Oklahoma City. And travel permitting, once COVID settles down and we're all back to normal, we'll go on some other out-of-state trips as well. If you have any questions about joining us, you can talk to your teacher, or give us a call at NOC or go to, as I said earlier, noc.edu and type Upward Bound in the search bar and there you will find the application and some more information about us. I hope you'll join us. We look forward to meeting you. Bye. Good afternoon, morning, whatever it is where you are. Eden High School students, I'm Mrs. Watts and I am here to walk you through the course of study, plan of study, and OK College Start. It is a requirement for graduation that we complete this annually, and I'm going to walk you through how to do it. I went through it with my kiddos in my class today, and it was super smooth. So what I need you to do is go ahead and log in to OKCollegeStart.org and just stay on this landing page. In addition to that, you need to open up another tab and get into your power school, okay? I have a sample student right here. I am in their power school. When you get into it, you need to go to grade history, okay? So that should be one tab open at the top of your screen, and your other tab open should be your OK College Start tab, okay? Teachers, go ahead and pause the video now and go around and ensure that all students have both of those tabs open and ready to work. Awesome. Now that everyone has gotten around to make sure all the students are in, make sure all the students are there where they need to be, you're going to scroll down a little bit on that landing page of OK College Start to the Enid Public Schools ICAP. Go ahead and click that now. And then it takes an awkwardly long time for it to load the ICAP. Okay? It takes forever. Um, it's awkward and it's weird, but and then I talk through it and make it more awkward. So I'm going to shut up now and wait for it to load. Boom. Okay. As a teacher, my account defaults to a 12th grader. I happen to teach 10th graders, and the 10th grader whose sample I have of his grades would have the 10th grade ICAP. So I'm going to switch it to 10th grade. Yours is going to be on whatever grade you are in. Do not switch your grade. Keep it on the one that's, that it's already in, okay? All right. Now that mine is loaded, this is what the 10th grade one looks like. Everyone else's looks almost exactly the same. What we're going to do is we're going to click on this check mark right over here on the right hand side. On the left side, all this stuff is really good information to help you prepare for careers and for college if that's the route you're taking. But this stuff over here on that check mark, this is the stuff that you have to do in order to complete your ICAP for this year. What we're working today is the plan of study. Go ahead and click right there. I clicked on the little plus mark first to bring down the task that I need to do. Click on your plan of study. When you use that little check mark thing on the right side, this little guy right here, and you click on something, it brings it to the top over here. Okay? I'm gonna now create my plan of study. Click that right there, create your plan of study. And this just says plan your high school courses using career clusters and pathways that interest you. So we're going to make our choices based on our interests. Go ahead and click right here, create your course plan. Um, based on some of my stuff that I've done, the career cluster survey specifically, it suggests I pursue a career in human services. I know that I want to pursue a career in education, and I'm planning my courses based on that, so I'm going to click here. If you literally have no idea what you want to do, just utilize that one right up there at the top 
that's based on what you entered for your career cluster survey. But like I said, I want to go into education, so I'm going to click education and training. Um, to give you an example, a student in my first hour class wants to be a tree trimmer. So we clicked that first choice, which was something with agriculture and natural resources. Guys, find a category that works for you and your desires. If you have no idea what you want to do, that's okay. Just find a couple things you're interested in, okay, and pick something. Now that we're here, you're going to build your plan with this program of study, okay? I know that I want to go into education and training, so I'm going to build my plan around that. Now that I've clicked there, I have to go down and choose which graduation requirement set I'm going to use. 99.5% of our students probably are on the college prep work ready curriculum. So most of us are choosing this. If you're not choosing this, you would have a teacher that would tell you you're not choosing that. Probably a special education teacher that has decided that you are going to take this set or the other set. But the rest of you, we're going to go ahead and choose this set. So you click choose the set. Don't click see details. It shows you the details. You need to choose the set, okay? Now that we have all of that here, there's some more stuff, some more exploration that we can do right here that I'm going to do at the end after I get my stuff done, okay? That's kind of a bonus additional thing that you can do, but it's not required. I'm going to scroll down. We can see right here it has 9th grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. And those are our columns. And then our rows are English, math, uh, laboratory science, I think is the next one. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go in right here to this blank white space. Don't click on the blue. Click on the blank white space. Again, for those in the back, don't click on the blue. Click on the blank white space under ninth grade and to the right of English. Once that loads, it takes you to this new screen that gives you some options. You do the drop down to select a course. When I was in ninth grade, I took English one, so I'm going to click that. It automatically defaults to one credit because each semester is worth a half a credit. You earned, if you passed both semesters, one full credit of English one. It was last year since I'm a sophomore, so I'm going to go to completed. Select grade. Oh no, what do I do? That's where your power school tab comes into play. I went in here to my grade history. And I clicked on last year's school year because last year is when I was a freshman. And these are my grades I earned. Okay. English one is the one I'm looking at. I got a B first semester. And right here I got a B second semester. Okay. So now that I know what grade to put in, I'm going to go ahead and go back over here. And I'm going to select a B. Here's the deal. Some of you got a B and a C. Just put the B. If you got a B and a D, Heck, average them, put a C, okay? Easy peasy. Once you're done with that, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Once you're done with that, click save. Don't forget that step, click save. It's going again. Sorry, I had to pause it because I was coughing. Um, and you guys didn't need to hear all that. All right, so now that I have entered that English grade, I'm going to scroll down and look, I see it in here. English one completed. I got one full credit and I had a B average. I came in here and did this Algebra 1 one earlier, but you'll do that the exact same way. You'll click there in the white space. And you'll come up with something like this. Do the drop down, select Algebra 1. It'll default to one full credit. You'll change it to completed, and then you'll find your average grade again. So for this one, you go in Algebra 1, a B and an A. Yo, I'm going to go ahead and go with the A on that. Okay? And that's actually what I did earlier. See, it's already in there. Okay? You are going to do exactly that working through everything. Let's do the Oklahoma history 
and um, U.S. government because you take those as a freshman for the most part, but they're only a semester long. So I'm going to go to history, go under the freshman, click on the white space. Now that I'm here, I'm going to scroll down and select a course. I took just regular Oklahoma history, and it defaults to a half credit because that's all you get for the half of a year. I completed it. Now let me go in and check my grade. For Oklahoma history, I got an A. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and look at my government because I know I'm doing that next, and I know I got a B in it, okay? So Oklahoma history, I'm going to mark an A, and I'm going to add another course. I'm already here. Save yourself a step. Add another course. See my Oklahoma history is there. Completed it with an A. Now I'm going to click my little drop down here to U.S. government and financial literacy. I completed that. And we said I got a B. I'm hoping I'm correct on that. Okay. So that's how you'll enter two in the same year for something that's only a semester. Those of you that are juniors and seniors uh, might be taking astronomy and meteorology. Those are semester-long classes under science. So you would do something similar to that. You would do both of them in the same year, and they each are worth a half a credit. So if you're a sophomore, you need to get all of your freshman year stuff done. The way to put in there planned courses. Again, sophomore, you're going to click on the white space under 10th grade to the right of English. <clears throat> and the way to plan your courses out we're going to click English 2. It's going to be worth one credit, and it defaults to that. I am enrolled in that currently, okay? And I'm going to save it. I don't have a full grade for my whole year because it's worth a full credit. I don't have a grade to put for the whole year, so I am only going to put that it's planned out. Even though I have a grade first semester, I have not earned a full credit. I've only earned a half a credit. So right now I have it as enrolled. Okay, go ahead and go through and do all of that for sophomore year. And hey, if you're an eager beaver, go on into your 11th grade. 11th grade English, I'm not there yet, but I know what classes I'm going to take because I've done my enrollment. Click the drop down. I'm going to take English 3. I'm not going to get after it and do an honors next year. I'm planning to take it, so we leave it as planned. Okay, and then go down and save. You should be able to complete all of this using that information from PowerSchool in your grade history. And here's the deal. My kiddos did it in my class today, y'all. You can do it. It's super easy peasy. It's just clicking back and forth between your PowerSchool and your OK College Start and entering that information in there. Enid High, you're capable of amazing things. Have a wonderful day.